Can, can you see my, my screen? Yes, yep. we can. And Hi, you're... I'm the cooperative itself. Hmm. Okay, I can start when we think is, we are ready. We can sure. wait for more minutes. I was telling Clark that today uh, a cooperative from Germany told me that they were going to to enter the, the meeting. So great. Yeah. I, also, I also heard from a cooperative in Turkey that oh. said they would join. Wow. <laughs> okay. More pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> I heard that the president of Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I well, heard he's on holiday is always so he I'm <laughs> sure he can, <laughs> he can be here. <laughs> Yes, so it's nine people. Feel free to start anytime you would like. Okay. Maybe we can write in the chat who are we and from uh, which cooperative are uh, every, every one of us. So, yes. Sure. An introduction. Okay, yeah, a little introduction, a brief introduction. Okay, so today I prepare a presentation uh, to talk about fit. Is the place where we uh, where we share works in in the project in the cooperative in sorry in the federation. So sorry, the first thing I will do is to make a brief introduction about me. I'm Nicolas. I'm founding member of Ficus, a software development cooperative in Argentina. So sorry. First of all, uh, well, before I start, I would like to make uh, a brief comment. In those slides, I, I brought a lot of text to be as clear as possible, so and so avoid misunderstandings by speaking in a language uh, that is not my native language. So please excuse the large amount of text in the slides. I know that that in doing so, I'm not following good practices in making presentation, but well. I think this is the best way. So, well, I will continue. Well, I'm founding member of FICUS, a software development cooperative in Argentina. Uh, I am a developer, but currently uh, I am coordinating projects and attending commercial opportunities in the cooperative. I participate as one of the FIT coordinators and I am part of the FACTIC board. Now I will tell you a little about FACTIC. Uh, here are some facts. FACTIC is the Argentinian Federation of Tech Worker Cooperatives. It was founded in uh, 2011. 16 software development cooperatives are members of FACTIC. And its members are distributed in different regions of the country, so we interact mostly in virtual way. Uh, well, a little bit uh, of how we interact. We share a mailing list in which only members of the Federation can participate. We, we communicate on a daily basis through Mattermost. It's an open source chat. I think we have talked about this uh, in previous show and tells. Uh, we have a virtual board meeting once a month. It's open to anyone in the Federation who wants to participate. And we have face-to-face -face meetings once a year. So now I will tell you a little, a little more about FIT. Uh, and I will make a brief introduction before I, I talk about the workflow that we use to share projects. Well, FACTIC is a, it's an area uh, in FACTIC, sorry, the FIT is an area in FACTIC. Uh, at the beginning, though, as a starting point, uh, the cooperatives uh, communicated 
uh, their status in the about the projects they were working on and their availability. Uh, and as the years went by, uh, we could say that in its current state, it became the area where we share projects. We have some basic rules, uh, and those are if you want to be part of it, you have to be a member of the federation. Uh, but you can be a, a FACTIC member and not participate in FIT. It's not mandatory. How we interact? We have monthly uh, virtual meetings. We share a specific Mattermost channel. Um, well, in the Mattermost channel, it's, it's the, the place where we talk in, uh, day by day. And uh, in the virtual meetings that are held, uh, once a month, uh, we, we, we have the chance to talk uh, more, more widely about uh, some specific things about our cooperatives. I will try to make a brief introduction about the workflow we use, um, the cases that we, we try to solve with this workflow, but it's, it's a, there are a lot of uh, things that can happen if you try to share projects, and so we are constantly changing the some things to improve this workflow. Uh, well, first of all, not all cooperatives work in the same technologies, but if they do, we avoid competition when the client is looking for resources. And now I will tell you how we do that. There are many possibilities that can occur when trying to share projects, as I said before, so that's why we are constantly learning how to improve this workflow. So I divided the workflow like in two cases, two big cases. There could be more, but they are, I think these are the main cases that we have. The first case is when we try to, to do like more like staff augmentation in one project, the project that we are working on. Uh, so this is the case when the project demands more developers than the cooperative wants or can assign to a project. Well. First, let's suppose that we are uh, Cooperative A and our client asks us for more developers on the team. Perhaps of, because of a strategic issue or because of a specific technology, we cannot satisfy the need. So that's when I, we communicate to the feed the request of developers in certain technologies. Here we can see that uh, maybe there are interested cooperatives. If there, there are uh, interested cooperatives, then the candidates are evaluated. And if they qualify for the project and the client agrees, they can share the development team. Um, the client is told that the developer, the developer is from another cooperative. Uh, so we have to explain what in intercooperation is and how we work on in that way. So I want to, to be clear that we, we are transparent with the client. We involve the client in the decision to have the cooperative to expand the teamwork. <clears throat> uh, the coordination of the project is always carried out by cooperative A, the same cooperative that carries the project. Is the, 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 there is only one cooperative. This is because of, we think it's more efficient in communication with the client. Uh, and although several cooperatives are working on the project, the commercial agreement is carried out by only one cooperative. In this case, it's the cooperative A. Well, the other case, the other big case that I, I will try to explain is when we, we want to delegate a project. The first one, the first case, is when we got, want to make uh, stop augmentation. This case is when we want to delegate the project. So we can say that this is when a potential client, potential client uh, requires development and for some reason we decide not to take it. Well, now as, as in the other case, let's suppose we are a cooperative B and a show, a show opportunity appears. Again, perhaps because of a strategic uh, um, issue or because of a specific technology, we won't take the project. Then we communicate it to FIT, specifying the received request. Then we will wait 
to see if there are cooperatives interested and available to take it. Maybe they are interested, but they don't have the availability. Um, if there is no interested cooperatives, then the client is informed that we don't have the availability to take it. Uh, but if there is one or more interested cooperatives, then the workflow is put into action. Now I will try to explain the, the workflow that is put into action when this happens. If there is only one interested party, the contact is passed and they can continue with the client directly. For example, suppose that in our cooperative, the cooperative C says, yes, I'm interested and, and I have the availability and the skills to, to manage this project. Okay, so uh, we, the, the cooperative B, uh, pass the, the contact and tell the client, you now will be working with cooperative C and then cooperative C continues talking with the client in direct way. If there is more than one interested party, then we have to uh, ask another thing. Uh, does this project requires more than one developer? So the answer is if the project requires just one developer, it's given to the cooperative who needs it most. I mean, who has uh, more availability or has more developers without a project assigned. But if the project requires more than one developer, the interested cooperatives manage the project as a team. They have to uh, look for the best way to manage the project as a team. So we pass the project to this team and the team solves all the issues and leads the project. To, yes, I, 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 I will mention uh, some case studies just in order you to, to know some cases that happened along these years. Uh, first case is better is is from the case one in which we needed uh, to make more like a staff augmentation in the team. Uh, the, the client asks for more and more developers and we didn't want to, to um, increase the, the team just because we didn't want to, to have a high percent of the developers working on the same uh, project. So we uh, went to the feed and we tell um, this issue that we have. Um, the other developers from other cooperatives started showing the, the, the team, development team of the betters. It's a client from Canada. Uh, it has a reservations and ticketing management platform. We have been developing the, this platform for five years. The technology that are used are MongoDB, Node.js, UGS, and Elixir. And currently there are 30 developers uh, from seven different cooperatives participating in the project. Um, we are, Ficus is like a kind of managing the project and leading the project, but we are in continuously um, communication with all the cooperatives to make uh, some decisions uh, on the project. So we, we work as a team, but every time we have to talk about the specific issue with the client, for example, a different rate hour for a specific, uh, I don't know, skill. Uh, Ficus is the one that um, uh, talks with the client directly for that uh, issues. Another case study is receptivity. Uh, is also uh, from the case one where we needed to make a uh, staff augmentation. Again, the client asked us for uh, more developers and we didn't want to uh, put more, more, dedicate more developers to that project. So uh, we opened the project to the feed and, and um, the interested parties in the feed sent us the resumes and we evaluated the, the candidates and we made the client participate in this decision. It's again a client from Canada. Uh, it's a website that shows real time psychological insights of staff. It uses uh, machine learning, but we are developer, uh, developing more like the front, front end of the, of the whole system. Um, we have been developing the, the, this, this um, project for two years. The technologies are Postgres, uh, React, and Django. 
Um, there are three developers from two different cooperatives participating in the project. Now I will mention two more case studies that are from case two. Remember the case two is when we wanted to delegate the project, the project comes to a shop opportunity, for example, comes to the, comes to the, the, the cooperative and we don't, we can't take it or we don't want to take it and we delegate the project to another cooperative. Uh, Mall Plaza, um, it's a client from Chile. Uh, we had to, um, to develop a mobile application to show mall services. Uh, it took uh, almost one year or one and a half year of development. The technologies uh, were React Native, PostgreSQL and SQL, sorry, and uh, FASC. And four developers from three different cooperatives participated in the project. Another case study uh, from the case two is a client from Argentina called Onapsis. Uh, we had to build a, web, uh, a website or web system specialized in displaying vulnerabilities uh, alerts on servers. It, it, it was almost two years of development. The technologies were Backbone, uh, Postgres, uh, and Flask. Uh, this time, four developers from two different cooperatives participated in the project. So, after explaining all this workflow and the different cases that we we are used to 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 take care about in the feed, uh, we are thinking about the next challenge. We are thinking about more like an international fit. So now that we have a local model that works, uh, we ask ourselves if we can replicate uh, this model with cooperatives on, all, on another part of the world. Uh, the answer to us is that we think we can do it. But we, well, after we answered that question, we started thinking about the first steps to do the so. So we think that the first step is to share some activity together, like this show and tell. Uh, that's why we, we, we talked with other cooperatives in the Federation to participate on these uh, show and tells, because we think it's very important to share some time together and to share this, all this knowledge and, and those, this experience that we have uh, showing projects in order to improve it. You know, if you, after I, I finish talking, if you have some suggestions or comments, uh, I, I would be happy to, to hear them in order to improve this. Uh, another step is to build trusted relationships. I, I think that it's, all, it's the same as the previous one. It's like we have to uh, share some time and discuss thing, things and, and share knowledge and experiences to do so and get to know each other in person, spend some time together. So, because of this last tip, uh, go to know each other in person, uh, we started thinking about traveling to meet other cooperatives in our part of the world. In this case, we, we talked with a cooperative called Landish. Uh, they are from the UK. And, well, we started thinking about the, the possibility of uh, making a trip, uh, traveling there and meeting a federation uh, that it's called Cotec. Uh, it's like this federation we have here called FACTI, but in the UK. Uh, it, this trip, uh, it will be the first trip that will be made from the federation with this intention that I'm telling you. Uh, we will visit cooperative from Cotec, as I told you. Um, and now in, on our return, we will tell you about the experience. Uh, but I think that, that it will be very positive and we will try to uh, explain them this, this workflow, the way we manage to, to um, share projects here and to listen to their, their ideas to improve this and to, to take this to another level. Uh, maybe think about uh, sharing projects together. So thanks for hearing and I listen your your question if you have.
wow, <laughs> that's that's really that's so simple and beautiful. That it, <laughs> Thank it's you. crazy. Why didn't the world think of this ten million years ago? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> thanks for listening. I didn't know if someone was listening there. <laughs> yeah. Can, can you, uh, is this slide presentation available to us? Yes, it's on GitHub. I will pass you the link. Thank you. This is really great work. It is. I'm also can, recording so we can uh, see oh, this nice. later. Uh, just to ask the question, um, the, the handoff between other worker cooperatives when you have work that you're like, you don't want to dedicate too many developers to one single uh, client. That's a great strategy. I totally support that <laughs> <laughs> as far as like the, that part of it. But also, um, uh, have you had any resistance or pushback from a client saying, oh no, we found y'all and you're the ones that we're going to work with? Or if you're the ones approaching them saying, hey, we have some other resources in quote a different company but it's still part of your your network has that been relatively minor to, to as far as a hurdle yeah yeah it's an excellent question yeah there are times when customers uh, may not understand cooperation between cooperatives or companies they just see companies did usually they don't understand what a cooperative is and the, the meaning of cooperation so they're there mm, they may not understand the cooperation so they don't want to involve more than one company in the project in that case uh, we respect their decision and we don't just don't insist uh, we try to explain them, we try to show uh, them these case studies and talk about the, the powerful that, that this workflow we think that is. Uh, because if, imagine this, if you are a company that you want and you want to build a, a team of developers and, and maybe tomorrow you have a, I, I don't know, a, new, a new feature to develop and you have a, um, a deadline, uh, we can uh, grow as uh, faster than another uh, company just because we are a lot of companies and we have a, a place where we can say, hey, we have this need, uh, someone wants to join the team and, and usually they do. Uh, so the, the group that, or the team that we can create is like more dynamic and it grows uh, like very quickly if the, if the client needs. So we have to maybe improve some things because as the as the group or the team grows uh, maybe you could have some problems in communication and leading the team but that's it's solved just by splitting the in in, in um, smaller teams and coordinating the teams so that's that's how we manage but how, to, yeah. how much do you expose out i mean <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to think through this. Okay, so you're doing some Postgres work. Yeah. And you need, uh, your team is rocking and has great work going on. You're, you're, you're full and you're like, you're reaching out to all of the worker cooperatives saying, hey, uh, I know you all have some Postgres people. Could you, you know, let us borrow somebody for this project? Um, how much do you expose to the client that, like, sometimes it's very back end work and I can imagine most of them aren't going to really care whether or not it's, as long as they can just write one check <laughs> and, no, and but, I think it's done. Yeah, 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 if I understood the question, I think I, do, I did. Um, if, if you need uh, some backup from one developer and it's a limited period of time, let's suppose uh, one month, it's, it's not necessary to, to expose this to the client, but if, mm -hmm. if you are planning to grow the team with, as, the, as the client grows, uh, we are oh, okay. transparent. Yes, it's like, well, we need okay. some support, and this is the best option for you because you will have a, wow. another, another, yeah, another company working for you as a team. We know how to work together. We have been working, working together for almost mm -hmm. six or seven years. Uh, sure. we, we, we think it's the best fit for you. So... Uh, yeah, the that, case, that's the, we the yeah. case I, I, I had experience with, which is the first one you shown uh, on the presentation, Nicolas, the Betres, um, yeah. it, yeah. it's actually a, a great uh, case of acceptance from the client side. 
and I believe that it started once um, the first cooperative um, came up um, enriching the project, uh, growing up um, as a second cooperative working from them. And I think that after that, they, they probably um, begin a, a period of total trust because mm -hmm. they, they, they realize that the, the bounds that unite different cooperatives are very strong and that wow. uh, we, we, we like working with uh, each other and the, the sense of companionship is very high and the way uh, we help one another, and I can say that because it's not far from, from now, mm. year and a half, um, the workers for, for, from FICUS, they, they did a, a, a very good job um, mm -hmm. leading us to engage with the project. And it was- well, I could- Yeah. Well, I just, uh, it just this makes sense to my brain. I've not seen it much in action obviously. Um, <laughs> but if you have um, three different worker cooperatives and um, one is overwhelmed with work and reaches out and says, hey, I need help. And it's more of a client engagement. It's actually full on developing with the client hand in hand work. And you're basically saying to the client, you're going to have a better fit with these people over here. We work with them a lot. We know them. The referral system is strong there and you're still there as the backup in case there's any kind of issues um, because there's sometimes the certain clients don't work well with certain you know groups of people um, uh, what one group considers high maintenance another group says it's kind of like they're normal <laughs> and also the different technologies that are involved uh, uh, another worker co-op could be more it's just the it just really speaks to y'all developing this level of trust with each other of knowing that, well, if, if they, if they, if the other group, you know, the, the worker co-op C in your, your presentation, if they can also feed the pipeline through with, if they're exposed to uh, more work, it definitely gives an ability to rapidly spin up and then, um, uh, I need work. Yeah, uh, and, and the client also realizes that um, whenever a new cooperative works, new operatives, new um, opportunities uh, come along. And, uh, you know, you need to have that, um, that mindset on the client's end. And it can, be, it can come um, already or you can try to talk them through the idea. And as I said, once, um, and I truly believe this, once they, they see the, the outcomes of uh, cooperation, they, they realize that it's actually a, a very good uh, way to grow up a team. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just totally impressed with it. Great, it was the idea. <laughs> the idea is uh, oh, that we could show this to you and maybe hear, hear what, what are your thoughts nowadays and um, your questions because this is what we are going to tell uh, when we travel to uh, to UK so it, it it's really helpful for us to hear you and your questions the simplicity is overwhelming. <laughs> um, it is really beautiful, um, well thought out to be so simple because you know how, um, I guess that famous saying, I'm sorry that it took me so long to write this. I did not have the time to make it shorter. So you spent a lot of time crafting this and putting it into practice. Um, my thought would be, how can we get other cooperatives or other people to give this presentation in many different places? Because you mm. can't be in 20, 30 places at once. Yeah. I would like to start ta or talk about something like that. How like someone like me could take your slide deck and, and do it at MIT in a, a meetup in a few weeks. Um, especially meetups that are um, 
like uh, there's a mix of people who are cooperative minded and a mix of people who are corporate minded but the most of the cooperative minded people haven't don't know enough about what you just showed us to venture off the yeah. end of the pier to get into it and they're still swimming in this land of looking for corporate handouts and a job in a cube and uh so i think this needs to be spread fast and furious <laughs> I, I have two questions, if, if I may. Um, the first one is, um, how do you manage um, sharing any business development costs? Sometimes it takes a great amount of time to get a client on board, and it's a huge investment. And, you know, how is that done? Or, or, or I guess, equivalently, how are profits shared? Um, the second question, um, because I have lots of kids here, is uh, how do... Um, how are how is project management um, allocated? Is it you know is it the league cooperative that brings? Do you have project managers? Is that is that who does the project management and billing, and um, and you know w what kind of overhead is needed for your business development and your project management? Okay, well the first one when uh, yes you need some time to to get on board of project. I think it's the expression, as you said, a ramp up. Uh, so uh, the way we manage the, that case is that the, the, the cooperative that is joining the project could maybe lower a little bit the rate per hour. So they can start like in scale uh, and they can start uh, with a lower rate and start increasing that rate uh, uh, until they they get the the full rate, uh, just as a part like as I don't know taking a part of this ramp up. Um, I think it's it's a good way in 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 which the the, the client will say, okay, you will share this this invest with me of of, of making another cooperative enter in the group. So we manage the way, but it could be another ways, and we don't know. So that's a, a good way, yeah. a, a good point. In which we can think about it together. I, I sorry, I remember a case where we did a fixed price uh, project with another cooperative, and it took like let's say two or three weeks for the other cooperative to to be able to finish and uh, yeah, really had the project. So we say okay, we will. Uh, we we were transparent each other, and we knew the fixed amount. Uh, what was the fixed amount? So we say, well, this part, this percent is for you. That is not uh, like programming hours, but it's the cost that you have for uh, getting that uh, project to be real. You know, uh, maybe it takes uh, months. So that that we are transparent and we we talk each other on on that case. Yeah, uh, what I was seeing saying is that maybe a show opportunity appears and, and from the time that this show or the, this opportunity appears and it became a real project, it takes some time uh, in which we are talking with the client, uh, preparing the, the project, uh, um, I don't know, maybe defining the task or the issues or the features and, and so on. Well, this whole time is, is like uh, when, when the, um, the client becomes real then we just talk with the other cooperative and say, hey, I invested this time. How can we, um, I don't know, share this this investment? Uh, but we all, I think the clue here is, or the, the yes, the, the main tip here is to be transparent between each other and to talk a lot. The communication is essential in these cases. Yeah. And also to be fair. Yeah. To be yeah. yeah. And and let me let me um again sorry sorry to interrupt. There, there's yeah. one more thing that I think was key, and I've been thinking about it a lot uh, lately. And in, in my case especially, I think it was a, a big um, gesture of generosity, right? There was there was uh, benefits, of course, um, economically speaking. Uh, for for everyone involved when when we we uh, engaged with with that Canadian project and working with uh, with Ficus, uh, Ficus guys and other cooperatives, but there's also the idea of um, 
of generosity and spreading the cooperative uh, way of working and making it um, profitable and making it uh, a true way of, of doing it. I realized that Clark's approach to it is um, what's the protocol? What, what's, how, how do you compensate for the cooperative which build the bound? And, and that's something that I, 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 I hear what you're saying. I, I think um, probably Nicolas, who's, who's on that, um, could, could um, learn from you or, or from your ideas or from your points of view to, to c come up with a better way to, to, to uh, create that protocol. But anyways, I believe that generosity is a key part of it. And there's, there's one more thing, and which is that something that I think uh, Ficus um, gains from, from engaging other cooperatives, which is uh, to strengthen the, the bounds with the client. I believe, I believe that every time um, the client trusts in Ficus that they will come up with extra resources and they do and those work correctly and the, 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 the developers pay off for the work, um, the, the, the trust they have with the client grows as well. Yeah, and, and an, another thing that I, I will uh, you to add is that we we analyze uh, the the project we use we usually use a a, a PNL tool to to make our forecast uh, for example if it's a staff augmentation project we could analyze the the, the price uh, of the of the profile and made and made um, our forecast on that. Um, we can we we have a, a great tool to analyze uh, over the time. Yeah, another thing that I would like to add is uh, well, at the beginning, for I remember the first times that we did this for veterans, it was the, the uh, first client we I remember we did this and we did another one. At the beginning, they were a little bit afraid, of course. Uh, they couldn't understand uh, everything. And the, um, I think that the key is that uh, as we do now and we do for other projects, that is that the a cooperative that this, the, the customer is the uh, centralized communication of any issue that uh, it may appear. For example, a change of rate. We, we said it before, but any issue that we may have, uh, I think that the client feels better to know uh, to who they should talk. You know, because if if you open the door and say, okay, now you have five uh, another companies and they don't know uh, who's the, I know, uh, the person that handles that. So we have someone in Ficus that uh, works on the project and also, for example, talks about the vacations, the holidays, the rate hour, uh, maybe the incoming of new developers. And also for Ficus and all the, the customer realize over the time that the benefit uh, of doing this it was really, really big because, uh, well, the, I think almost the, the, the majority of the Developers that join the the team are still working on the customer, and for us it was um, uh, yeah the only way that we could see that we could provide uh, quality developers, and uh, not just people that we searched because they, they ask uh, that they say that they they wanted more developers, but we can not guarantee that if you if we search our internet here in Argentina or whatever we can give a quality developer so with the cooperatives that we knew and we improve our relationship we know that we can trust them and we can give really good developers for for the customer and right now the reality is that they don't even think about when we recommend another cooperative almost is that way they just trust on what we say so i think that's the the way that we are realized that this this is a success of, for them and for us so, so uh, are you 
Oh, sorry. Are you collecting some of these testimonials and putting it at, at an individual cooperative level, or are you actually putting some of these testimonials at the at the cooper at the um, at the at the grouping level? Uh, what, what was it? Ficus cooperative of cooperatives, or the or the you know the the association level? Okay. Did, did that make sense? I mean, the federation. Yeah, the fe yeah, the federation. Uh, I, yeah. It's important. I mean, it's important to establish a name brand and recognition and build it. So ah, that yeah. It yeah. makes development easier. It, you know, are these? Are you guys collecting these right. at the federation level? And um, and how do the cooperatives decide that their client relationship that they've developed can be used at the federation level? And did you? Is that was? The, is that? I, I know you have a lot of trust. And I, I know it comes down to that, right? That you just trust the other people you're working with, and you know the contracts and all that just, you know, follow from the trust. But and, 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 anyway, I was, I was just curious where those are going. And the other, I had one other follow-up question. Um, in these engagements, most of the time, the clients are owning their, the software that you guys are writing or, okay, yeah. Yeah, right, thanks. Yes, yes, yeah. The, the, the code is from the, is, is paid by the client and is, and is for the client and they own it. And if they agree to, to, um, to open that code, we we are happy, but they have to agree with that. Okay, yeah, yeah, because I had another question that was following up, which is that what happens in a client relationship um, when something doesn't go particularly well, and um, and you know, and you end up having to put in some multiple of what you initially thought in order to make the client relationship whole, and um, and then uh, and then I, I realized that this is probably related to who's owning the residual property. You know, uh, you know, because if you know if if you the cooperatives are owning the property or doing something with it, then then you have an obligation to to make sure that your brand name, you know, that you have to put additional money to make things whole. But otherwise, if they're owning it, then they're getting the risk. So you know that then then so the risk profiles are different depending if you're uh, um, a private company or, or sorry whether or not you're building intellectual property um, internally versus externally. And of course, making it all open source helps, right? and you don't yeah. have to worry about this. But uh, yes, but, but sorry, but every time we another cooperative joins the team, they have to sign contracts and every every cooperative uh, signs their own contract with the client so that we keep that separated. Well, it seems to me that um, if you look at this one here, this five-year development, um, <laughs> obviously you didn't bring in seven different cooperatives in the first week. No. Um, <laughs> so, no, no, it but also yeah. most likely you are billing the customer throughout the first three months, throughout the first six months. Like there's still, there's payments going on and it's only as the project builds out and out and out that you start reaching out to bringing in new cooperatives uh, to help out is my guess on that. Yeah. And then yeah, the question about, um, the upfront project management uh, lead generation scenario that seems like in that first three to six months, if you bill correctly, you're, you're kind of working through that process there. It's just later on after the first six months, you are actually doing more just project management and development tasks. And you're realizing that uh, the scope of this is bigger than what y'all want to just fully commit your whole company to. And so the, the other cooperatives are actually piggybacking on your work, but you actually got paid for that up front. Um, is that Clark, is that more what you were thinking through? Yeah. I'm, I, I, I was just trying to understand how the risk is allocated and, sure. and, um, and so, yeah, it, but, but it, yeah, if the client is owning the work the product, then, yeah. then they're the ones that are paying incrementally as if you were, almost an employee employee and yeah, yeah. so that the, they're the ones that bear the risk of it failing and yeah, uh, yeah, just, yeah because it can work but yeah yeah the product is from the client is it's client product and they mm -hmm. they need a team to to develop the, the product and to make it in you know, bigger mm -hmm. and they hire a, a company to to develop sure. the, the project yeah that's the case yeah it's not that we own the code or how we own the involved product. How involved are you in the design phase? A lot, a lot. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, we have uh, like 
team uh, team leaders or like mm -hmm. technical leaders in the team that they they are involved in the decisions but in the technical decisions it's sure not in the business decision and because that's our mm -hmm. part that is mm -hmm. our shop so and, and there's another uh, well yeah another case in which uh, for example this client Beteres uh, needed uh, more developers and there was no one at the feed with the skills mm -hmm. to work on the project they didn't know the for example, they didn't know no shares. Uh, and we set up a course um, and started training our cooperatives to join the project and giving wow. them the opportunity. Yeah, the opportunity to work on this project. And that's how wow. this last Friday we finished the first course of no shares <laughs> in a virtual way. And wow. this Wednesday, yeah, today, the I think uh, 10 developers are going to set for a, an exam to see mm -hmm. if they learn <laughs> enough. Sure. And if they pass the exam, we will present these developers to the, to the, to the client so they can start working. So imagine the, sure. the, yeah, the powerful of this workflow because we are solving a lot to the client. Uh, mm -hmm. We are solving all, all, also the the training of the yes yes because uh, that that part that uh, the, we have a, a trainee working on on betteres of mm -hmm. Debecop. Mm -hmm. yes Christian is right. from Debecop and, and, and other cooperative and, and, yeah. and guys would 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 give you Node and would give you uh, Vue.js training while making an induction to the actual project which is beautiful. And I'm, I'm actually very interested on, on, on your point, Clark, because there, there, there are probably going to be future cases on which uh, fatigue, you know, the, the brand which we would, or the, the, the fit is the front of intercorporate corporate, corporate, corporation and fatigue is the federation, right? So I think that this is a, a, a process which is growing. And at, at a certain point, I, I believe that um, we, we have a, a lot of very skilled resources, right? At different levels. And at a certain point, I believe that, that we, we, we should be able, or, or I, I think uh, we are gonna try to build in that direction, the possibility of, of uh, taking, uh, owning the risk, right? Of uh, uh, take, taking the responsibility of, of driving the project end to end and, uh, be able to give consistent answers for that, right? Which would be, I believe, um, the way we should, um, it, it's like a roadmap. The idea of, of uh, growing from here into cooperation based on the trust that, that I believe is a platform. But after that comes uh, lots of steps of, of making this uh, a bigger thing and uh, a bigger proposal with um, more characteristics on it and a robust um, way of uh, answering to, to new clients. The, the ability to take on a, a additional risk allows you to charge higher rates and it allows you to, um, mm -hmm. and, and, but then you have to really be careful about brand management because one, one or two bad projects can be a serious loss. And you don't want, you know, any random person using the name that you build in order to take one of those losses and then decide to not make the, the client whole. Otherwise, you'll have other cooperatives have to swoop in to solve a problem that they didn't really sign up for just because they want to make sure that the Federation's name is not drugged through the mud. Okay, okay got to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm new at, at this, but I, I follow your, your, your thought and I, I believe that that's what, that, that's some of the key um, things we need to learn from. Well, so there's I'll, an interesting thing that Clark is bringing up, and of course, I'm not trying to speak for you, Clark, but um, <laughs> uh, just dealing with a long history of the corporate world and uh, in the U.S., there's definitely bad actors and people who are trying to skate by and you know charge high and then uh, not fulfill their obligations, which is what um, Clark seems to be speaking to here. It seems to me that the cooperative side of it allows for this other dynamic of the social integration to where we're all helping each other out rather than someone breaking off and just doing something that's going to like be punishing. Um, 
kind of provide his own checks and balances. Um, it just seems like I'd be very open to exploring. Um, it's not that. likely, not likely to happen in a, yeah. in a cooperative atmosphere because yeah. you don't feel those same fears and uh, you no. feel like you can ask if you need something, you can ask for it. You don't have to steal it. Yeah. And, um, I just see this leading to other wonderful things like perhaps the Federation, each person could put in a certain amount each month and build a fund to send a cooperative on a trip like you're going to the UK. So all year long we put money into a fund and then we vote on which cooperative do we send where? Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, it's a wonderful I mean, yeah, way. Own. <laughs> we, we we already uh, yes. started thinking about that last year. Yes. Uh, I think last year um, we we wanted to join and make like a, a brand with all the cooperatives that wanted to participate and and put some money and all together and send one cooperative to one place. But the thing is that we didn't we didn't have the 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 a, a net like like the one we are trying to build. So we think that the first step is building relationships and, and trying to um, work with companies that share our values. That's, I think, is the main goal and the best way to start this. Uh, we really appreciate uh, working with our cooperatives and we, we are really happy to work with a, a company that shares our values because it's like you feel like you don't have to to think uh, um, to um, uh, think about these things that you were talking about uh, uh, who owns this this or or i have this i don't know uh, should i have this problem or no you just it's like you are talking in the same language um, i think what and another thing that i wanted to to say is that I think that the great goal that we have in the federation is to, to strengthen the cooperatives of the federation and the way to do it is to work so that all have the same opportunities in the federation so if one cooperative have one client that is a good client and you and and you see that your cooperative can grow with this client well uh, call other cooperatives to join the, the client and to uh, and help uh, strengthening the other cooperative because you don't know when you will need it so maybe this uh, we have this client and um, this project ends um, and you realize that you 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 don't own the client the client can go everywhere everywhere um, but if we are strong uh, if, if we have built strong uh, strong network here and and we are organized uh, well, today we help a, a, a cooperative, and tomorrow another cooperative, a cooperative can help us. So I think that's the clue. We have to be uh, united here, and 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 we have to understand this. Uh, it's like cooperation is is that it's helping one each other all the time, and you don't know when you will need it. Yeah, yeah, um, it's a very refreshing. Uh, contrast with a friend of mine who is also a part of a tech company, but it's a much more capitalist, traditional tech company. And they had a client um, who was working with one of their developers and the developer left for another company and the client wanted to keep working with that developer. And so started working with the new company that they had joined. Um, but because this new company and the original company didn't have this cooperative relationship, it brought up all sorts of toxic dynamics, you know, and the one company even, they even tried to be sort of civil and say, hey, well, typically we have a no compete clause when a worker goes to another company, but in this case, we'll make an exception, but they, they you know, they kept breaking breaking trust with each other. You know the conditions they agreed on. The the new company kept breaking those conditions. Uh, the client, you know, never told the original company from the beginning. So that it, it's and I feel like that's so typical in the corporate world. This very dishonest, conniving, competitive sort of nature. And so it's it's a, such a different refreshing way of of actually working um to actually cooperate transparently and intentionally so yeah i, I think it's a model that can can grow 
for sure. Yeah, it's it's yeah. the real thing, right? Uh, I, I I used to work in in American Express. I, I think I told you you this in American Express Argentina, and they had this this way of uh, healthy living. They they gave you all sorts of um, team buildings and things to uh, strength bounds. They we, we used to spend a lot of time. Uh, in those kinds of things, right? Once a month, we the whole team went together to a certain place, but it, it was so shallow and superficial. And it was it, it wasn't the real thing, and um, I believe that I I I, don't, I think we actually sound uh, esoteric or, or something like that, right? American Express is doing it, right? They they believe that it's very important, and that that thing is kind of guaranteed when 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 the values we speak of, uh, the ideals, are actually driving beneath the thing. And on top of that, um, the, the actual technological skill and uh, the, the roles are covered and uh, we know what we are doing. So it's, I believe it's, it's really cool and I, and I agree. It was, that, that's the word, it was refreshing. Hey, um, just before the hour is up, I just want to mention because uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, I've been working with some people uh, uh, here in Dallas, Texas, um, not known for the home of worker co-ops, um, <laughs> but uh, dealing with along these lines of trying to uh, find a producer or platform co-op um, uh, thing where it would allow for worker co-ops and um, and individuals who want to be part of a larger co-op, but they don't have a worker co-op themselves, to be able to handle complex uh, projects. So um, I put the mailing list in there for people who want to start getting involved in that. Um, I definitely don't want to distract from the work here and what y'all are doing, but it does kind of seem like along the lines of, of that. And if you already have something else out there, if you know of anything else out there, I'm, again, I'm in the idea phase, and so if we can link up to other people who have resources, um, I would prefer not to invent something from scratch, but to um, help work with people who, people who are already doing this work. But there's definitely some, um, some things which this really speaks to my heart about as far as um, you know, cooperation among cooperatives and um, it just seems like there's this idea of like, well, you have to be kind of be in a worker cooperative to, to experience this. And the thing I was uh, wanting to look at develop is a way for people who are individual contractors to start working with people who are in cooperatives and build from that. So um, uh, just feel free to subscribe to the, the newsletter and, um, uh, we'll, we'll see about <laughs> moving right. forward with it. it. It would be great to have a LinkedIn for co for people who think cooperatively. Boom. That would be cool. Yeah. Because it's really hard the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some way to um, introduce people to it, um, to cooperatives. I think one of the best ways is to really, really try hard to get them to come into this chat. And, uh, you know, even if they just lurk, you know, and they just have a headphone on while their boss is in the background or something <laughs> and can just get an idea of how we talk and how we treat nice. each other. Yeah, I think one thing I, I, I wanted to say as, as I was hearing you is that I, I think you are a cooperator before you join a cooperative. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe you are a yeah. cooperative and you don't know because you are not working in a cooperative, but you have the values. You, you yeah. realize that yes. something is wrong Yes. With, with the company you are working on <laughs> and you have those values regardless you are working or not in a mm -hmm. cooperative then i think that over time you you naturally will enter to a cooperative to work because you you feel it it's not like you, uh, something that is not natural it's natural if you have those values you will finish working in this way i think it's my point of view and i mm -hmm. think that we as cooperators have a challenge uh, and that is that we have to show that it can be, you can build a different uh, reality. Uh, and you, you have mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, to build a fairer and more equitable approach to solutions. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I am sure that I'm really sure that the cooperativism is a solution, and into cooperation is the way to scale that solution to a higher level. So mm -hmm. I think that we have that challenge, and, and we are we think we are we can um, we can manage that. It's interesting because I was as I was presenting these ideas to people because I'm as I'm learning, I'm talking to people, and, I'm, and I keep telling everybody I talk to like if you like this idea of this producer cooperative that's you know online something and you go do it just invite me back in i'm fine i don't care um, <laughs> if you go write, write the code out um but the I was talking to one of the people was like well it doesn't seem fair to allow for worker cooperatives and individuals to uh both be on the same like platform and then working on the same uh, uh not quite bidding on the same projects but still um uh, being in the same algorithm as to who gets applied onto something. And that's a very much a uh, capitalist um, uh, thought process versus what we're talking about here is this worker cooperative, this cooperative value thing where if it's three people from one worker cooperative and another three that are just individual contractors, but we're all working together and solving problems for uh, customers. And we all benefit and we all share equitably like that's a that's a very much a, um, a different value thought process well one of our main <laughs> hurdles is to change people's mindset from mm -hmm. this co co um, corporate corral that yeah. they're into um, I spoke at a an event last weekend called nerd summit and it was developers from all different um, languages all different backgrounds some corporate some using free software some open source and I spoke to them about personal power and how no one can really have their personal power unless they are given it and they take it it's a two-way thing and people, uh, developers that do not know about this cooperative world were blown away. Um, mm. People actually cried at the end of <laughs> this, this talk that I was just talking about my life and how I became a cooperator and how I met all these cooperators and I'm always meeting them because I have mm -hmm. the signs up, the flags up. And um, they were just so, they just could not believe this world exists outside of the corporate world so wow um, we're coming up on we're up on the hour mm -hmm. so <laughs> i like to let everyone get back to their real life <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh -huh. this is we, just we... a dream right <laughs> <laughs> no it's real I, I... it is real it is yeah. here and it is real yeah well I, um i hope you like the presentation yes uh, and can I you put it in the I... link yeah, I will send you the link, and okay. I hope it serves as a starting point to for thinking about how to work together uh, to achieve yeah. the goal of international intercooperation. We uh, we can think uh, something together and see if we can reach that goal. So thanks for listening and for the the questions. It helped me a lot to to hear you and to hear your comments and increase so I can improve this this presentation. Oh, and yeah. thanks again uh, to Agaric to to give us the opportunity to to share this and to participate in this in this space that we are creating together. Thank you so much, Nicholas, thank and thank you to Ficus and uh, all the other co-ops. This is mm -hmm. wonderful. Let's keep going. And Absolutely. We'll thank see you, you guys next you week for, for um, another presentation. See you next week. See thank you. Week. Thank you. Have a nice week. You know, Thanks. Bye bye. bye, -bye. You're gonna send out the recording, right? Um, yes, I'll send out a link to the recording. Beautiful. Thank you. Thanks.